Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's 12 o'clock, but people are just starting to really pile in. So let's give it like two or three more minutes. How's everybody doing? And, you know, feel free to chit chat. <laughs> um, unmute if you want to. It's How's everybody doing? Here. What's that? It's super hot here. I don't know what it's like there. <laughs> where Where are you, Lucy? Suburban Chicago. Oh, okay. Well, we're not that far away. We're in Ohio, and it's um it started out in, at a nice temperature, but it's quickly getting very hot because it's so humid. Yeah, yeah. But that's the story of summer in the Midwest. Yeah, it so. certainly is. Yeah. <laughs> We, I'm in Port Angeles, Washington, and we keep saying, you can send the heat here now. We had that hot spill of 100 degrees, but oh, it's, yeah. back in the, it's back in the 60s and 70s, so we'll take yeah, a Yeah, I, I see when we do our knit-along meetups that people out there are wearing sweaters to the meetups, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. <laughs> a little bit. It's, it's kind of rainy out that way, though. I don't know if I would want to live there. <laughs> we haven't had any rain for probably 50 days. Wow. It's really, really dry. <laughs> As um, evidenced by the threats of wildfire and everything. That yeah, all the wildfires out here. Happening out there. Well, we had a day this week when the sky was full of smoke from the West Coast. So that's how far it's traveling. And I know New York was under... A, a dome of smoke for a day or two as well. Just everything's a moving target, I guess. <laughs> Which is one of the good reasons to use nat natural fibers. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're supporting a sustainable um, and renewable resource that's got a low carbon footprint. So. <laughs> Um, not that this month's yarn is uh, one of ours, but in general, um, we really work hard to keep our use of resources down um, to offset the pollutants that naturally come from sheep. You know, um, agriculture produces its own um, mm -hmm. contaminants to the to the air, and not an insignificant. Um, measure of it either but um you know we're always working on our end we're working as hard as we can to minimize it <laughs> yeah. um, so um here we are with our wonderful cantaloupe yarn how did you guys like it <laughs> i know i know you know a couple people may know that it's not their favorite color but um we just wanted something really refreshing and um kind of representative of the palette of colors that you might see in uh on your plate at this time of the year and all around in the flowers and uh garden produce and um so we just thought a a nice refreshing color would be in order and um the the yarn base that we picked is um was chosen to be a very refined and smooth and soft yarn base purposely to create the new pattern the socks that um that i designed for the barn box um option and i just wanted something really smooth that would feature the tiny little eyelet stitch pattern, which is, you know, a not a deeply textured one, or um, it doesn't have a lot of kapow in terms of its mechanics, but as, as it multiplies across a fabric, and if the fabric is very smooth, it has its own kind of impact. And, um, and again, it's a summary, it gives like a, a summary feeling to a knit the edging at the top is a favorite. So this sock is, in case no one noticed, um, it is kind of a distillation of the violet sweater pattern. It has the same edging and the overall uh, pattern on the sock is the same. And it's just all turned around upside down. So 
um, so that it can be a sock. And um, when I designed the sock, well, first of all, let me talk about the, the yarn just a little bit more. We sourced the yarn from Stitch Mis Mischief, um, which is a dyer named Jade Prosser who lives in Vancouver, Washington. So all the way out on your West Coast for people who are out there. Um, she was so enthusiastic about doing our club. She was so excited to be asked and to show us different bases that, um, that she has available and, and to work with us on the color. She created this custom color. Um, you know, she loved the idea right off the bat and just got busy right away on a, a colorway for us. And I, I just think she nailed it pretty much on the first try. Um, and the base has, um, the base is merino, uh, it's superwash merino and um, silk and cashmere. So there's no dressy sock. It's a tightly spun that often. So um, I love the idea of this. And also we want it, we know everybody doesn't like to knit socks and that's sort of a given with our audience. I'm, I, I have designed a lot of socks. I think I have about 70 sock patterns in my catalog, but um, a lot of people that follow me are not sock knitters. In fact, they are very much not sock knitters. So they like to knit shawls and they like to knit lace accessories as well. And so we wanted to choose a, a yarn that had kind of an all around appeal for different types of accessory projects. And, and this yarn really fit the bill because it is very wearable as a sock yarn, but as you can see from our little budding apple sample, it also makes just a beautiful fabric for a lace shawlette or shawl, or a wrap, or a scarf, or a cowl. So it has really, really nice drape and body, and it shows off, you know, a number of different stitch patterns really well. And so I always like a, you know, I always like a versatile yarn for um, clubs and and um, subscription shipments, so that all of our members will be happy knitting it in whatever they, they like to knit. <laughs> um, it's, it's always a goal of mine to please as many people as possible, even though I know I can't always make everybody happy. <laughs> and I'm glad, that, I'm glad that plenty of you really do like it. One of the things I wanted to talk about with the sock is that it has a short row heel and um, I know short row heels can be a little bit controversial. Everybody has their favorite method and you are welcome to insert, and this is true of any of my patterns, you're welcome to insert any heel that appeals to you more. Um, if you wanted to put a flap heel on this sock and um, let's see, let me just unfold the heel here. If you wanted to do a flap heel and make a rectangle that went all the way down, you could even continue this, this, this little eyelet pattern all the way to the heel turn if you like that. It's, so if you wanted to do a flap heel, but you still wanted it to be delicate looking and pretty, you could, you could do that. Um, let's see. And as far as the type of heel that you knit, that's really up to you, whether you like a, a slip stitch heel or you like a patterned heel. With the short row heel, I thought I would do some experimenting. The heel that I write in my short row heel, um, I'm sorry, the, the, the heel that I use in my patterns when I use a short row heel is kind of a simple wrap and turn um, and the way that I learned to do short rows, it, it, it's very um, tight. It doesn't make holes. What you see here are not, the dark spots are not really holes. That's like more of a texture. It's kind of a depth. Um, 
but it has a nice kind of a refined and not very bulky profile to it. But I've been hearing a lot about different types of short row heels and the shadow heel is really popular with a lot of sock knitters. So I thought I would try that on one of the socks that I knit for my sample. So this is the shadow heel that I made. And it, it looks like all the shadow heels I kind of researched online, but my problem with it, and, it, and this may be my execution or the way that I knit, is that it really is um, bulkier. And I felt like in this sock, I was all set to put this in the pattern, but I felt like after I made both heels and compared them, and I'll put them up so you can see both of them, I really liked my original heel better in terms of um, how clean and kind of non bulky it is. Let me just um, see if I can fold this in such a way that it can be, we can put them side by side. And I don't know, um, some of you may have commentary on that of your own that you can add in a little bit. So here are my two heels oops, side by side. And you can see that this one has a little bit less visual presence and it's a little smoother. This one is just a little bit fatter and, and bulkier. And that is that does translate to more density in the fabric as well. Which depending on how you wear your socks and how large your heel is and how scuffed up your, your skin might be, that might be preferable for you. Um, I was thinking more of, you know, I was thinking more of photography and pairing these with um, heels or sandals and that the heel would be very visible on our end and we would want something smoother. So that's just my um, opinion and my take on it. Um, you are welcome to change the pattern to whichever heel that you like and which one serves you well. And the same thing goes for the toe. So I, I wanted a really refined looking toe. I wanted something that didn't have a big ridge. I just wanted a very smooth looking toe. Um, and I like a grafted toe on most of my patterns, but for this one, I um, I liked the little and, and you know I change things in my own patterns many times to fit my own feet. So I have more of a pointy shape in my toe area. So I like a toe that comes to something of a point. And what I usually do is um, I do the every other decrease every other decreasing every other round. Um, up to the point where I would be grafting it. And then I decrease every round. So it makes a little sort of a barn shape at the toe. And for my purposes and my fit, that works really well. Um, again, feel free to stop your decreasing when you've got a third of your stitches left and graft it if you like that shape better, or if you love to do grafting, cause I know everybody <laughs> loves to do grafting. <laughs> um, and normally I do set my toe decreases in a little bit from the corner. So there's a little uh, ridge there. But in this case, again, I just put the decreases right next to each other at the end of the needle and the beginning of the needle. So that it created this very smooth, almost like a very flat zipper look along the edge. And it, it does still create a well wearing area there for the side of your toe. It's just not as wide as the, you know, wide toe. So, so that's a little bit about the design and construction of the sock. Um, you know, I'm always thinking of ways that will kind of bring the design, not just as a visual object, but something functional and useful as well. These socks can also be lengthened to whatever length you like. And if you prefer um, an upper edge with ribbing, you know, go for it. Even um, I had considered, and it would work, 
I had considered putting ribbing between the edging and the body of the sock, just a, like a half inch of ribbing to extend the, the lacy edge a little bit and to give a little grip there. So that's another option you could um, try out. It, it's um, easy enough to try it. And if you don't like the way it looks, you can just rip it back to the, um, to the edging and, and proceed. So there, there are a really any number of ways that you can alter your sock to suit you. And I'm fine with that. The, the yarn, um, I did not experiment with how long you could make these socks, but I imagine with this much yardage, 437 yards, I imagine you could at least, I know you could at least double the height of the sock, you know, from the start of the heel. So you could at least double this and work three full repeats of the pattern. And I imagine you could even go a little further. Um, the pattern is, I think it's 12 or 16 rows. I don't have the pattern right in front of me, but um, you can always um, calculate out how many rows of pattern you would need to make the, your favorite length of sock and, and work it that way. Okay, um, who has questions? Anybody want to talk besides me? <laughs> Debbie wants to talk. <laughs> I can't even see most of you. Most of your cameras aren't even on. <laughs> I do have a question. Uh huh. Um, so I'm not a big one for nylon or nylon in it, or, or I, I I should say because I'm not a. Um, sock knitter I know you need it but the superwash do you know how they I I sent them a note and asked them how do they do the superwash do you uh -huh. know well I imagine this um so this dyer probably buys her bases from a distributor so okay. she's not really in control of how the superwash is made um in uh -huh. general superwash um creating a superwash fiber um entails bleaching, you know, bleaching the fiber, first of all, so it can be dyed. Most dye bases have been bleached. And, um, and applying other chemicals, which I can't name off the top of my head, to basically you're weakening the fiber so that it loses right. its crimp. Um, the crimp, the curliness of the fiber um, is what is a characteristic that makes fiber able to felt. So felting is not um, a process by which the fiber is shrunk. What happens with felting is that you, you shock the fiber, open up the scales on the fiber and get the crimp, get the fiber ends you know, out of the yarn, so blooming, so that they will catch on each other and curl around each other more and more and more and draw up tight. It's not shrinking the fiber, it's just tangling the fiber more and more and more so that it draws the fabric closer. And um, anything you can do to weaken the natural characteristics of wool to do that by, um, by um, neutralizing the proteins in it, by mm -hmm. straightening out the crimp, by stretching the fiber to weaken the um, molecular links that it has mm -hmm. will all um, contribute to a superwash uh, process. And there isn't just one thing that they do to the wool to make a superwash fiber. They do any combination of, of those things. Um, and which is one reason why we never make any of our yarns with superwash fiber. Um, mm -hmm. So. But um, because this yarn doesn't have nylon in it, the superwash um, will contribute to, you know, uh, the fiber not felting. Uh, um, oh, there was something I was just gonna say. One thing I noticed over the years, like years ago, I used to knit with superwash once in a while. And um, one thing I noticed is that kind of like bamboo fibers and other synthetics that are treated with a high number of chemicals. Um, superwash fiber tends to just implode after a while. Like um, 
I've had several sweaters that I knit with Superwash that, you know, were fine, 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 fine. And then all of a sudden one year, they just developed like little holes on them, kind of like moth holes, but not, you know, in, in odd places that didn't have any wear and tear, like right here on my chest or, you know, down at my waist. And um, I just, I didn't, I didn't understand it at first because I didn't have the knowledge, but now I know that those treatments that they do on superwash fiber are basically wearing and tearing at the fiber. And so it is weakening it substantially so that it won't do its natural little dance that it likes to do. And therefore it is vulnerable to holes, even in places that not just holes, because holes I think of as, as what happens when, you know, you lean on your elbow a lot, or you have habits of like pulling at your neck and eventually, you know, like David does, <laughs> um, and eventually the neck wears out or clipping something on your neck and, um, you know, eventually that wears out. But, um, but these are holes that just appear out of nowhere uh, in a spot that they shouldn't. And you'll see that as well with, um, with synthetic, with natural synthetics like bamboo and um, lyocell sometimes where the fabric will be fine. And then seven or eight years down the road or 10, all of a sudden the fabric develops all these little hard balls all over it and little holes appear and it's, it's a goner or it loses all its shape all at once, you know, it, it loses all of its elasticity. So, um, sorry, I went off on a tangent answering your question, but, but, um, but, um, that those helpful. are, yeah, that, um, that I like all that little stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, that accumulation of experience in my knitting life, um, is, uh, really contributes to the reasons why we make the wool we make and not, mm -hmm. you know, and not a product like this in general. Um, we might offer a product like this every once in a while because I, I know, um, you know, I know people like dyed yarns once in a while, and this is, um, uh, this is really what's available. <laughs> there's, there's not a huge range of uh, available naturally, natural fibers that are, that are dyed in quantity that we can, you know, kind of get behind. Um, but, you know, let us know. Um, we're always open to hearing from our subscribers. If this is something you would prefer to avoid completely and, um, and you know, as a consequence have less dyed yarn because of it, we're completely open to that. We have more ideas than we can um, yeah. deal with in terms of making our own combinations of fiber, so. Yeah, so I, I, don't, oh. I don't have enough information on, oh, sorry. No, I just I don't have enough. The, uh, oh. con Go ahead, yeah. Kathy. Okay, I'm sorry. I just wanted to ask again about what's in this yarn because I'm I'm hearing no nylon, but my label says nylon. And oh, um, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I said cashmere, and it's and it has nylon. I, I'm sorry. I misspoke. So okay. I just wanted yeah. to get that straight. Thank one of the bases. One of the bases we were offered what was a cashmere silk. It was merino cashmere and silk. Right. And we went with the nylon because of the sock. So I'm, I'm, I totally misspoke. I'm sorry. That's fine. No, thank you. <laughs> Jean? Yeah, so um, I don't know much about this, so I don't, but it's worth researching. I guess I could research it and give you the information. If, but that there's people doing um, superwash without, um, ecologically, so it doesn't. Uh -huh damage water and da, 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 this and i think pretty successfully already so i wonder if that's just an avenue to research it's something to look into um what what we often find with those um yeah sources at this point it's not available yeah. in like at a wholesale um yep. on a wholesale level or i mean yeah it's great that they're not ruining the water and I'm not yeah. in any way taking away from what they're doing. That's great, but yeah. it, it may still be damaging the fiber itself. So what you're- Yes, probably it is. 
yeah How you're still gonna run by into the very it. nature yeah 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 yep yep so thank you thanks Bill. oh you're very welcome who else yeah. has something they'd like to talk about I, i'm what? one of those people sorry go ahead oh go ahead lucy okay i'm one of those people who is not a sock knicker knitter uh-huh and uh -huh. never will be probably uh -huh. but, um i'm wondering is, is this going to work for a scarf or a stole or something like that? Oh, absolutely. The pattern collection for this shipment includes a couple of different sh scarf and shawl and accessory patterns. I mean, I think the Miss Doolittle set would be so, so cute in this, in this color. Um, that's the scarf. It's a, it's a, it's a simple lace pattern and it has, um, a hem that's pleated that I just think is adorable. <laughs> and then it has matching fingerless mitts with the pleated cuff too. So um, so that's available to you. Also uh, the violet sweater. Um, and I think we put, did we put Sprossling or, or Bloomshin in the collection? I think we put a second sweater. That would be cute too. Um, but we try to really give a rounded, oh, budding apple is, this the shawl that I showed and I think you could probably make the medium size with your skein this is the smallest this is the little scarf version um but I think you could definitely make the the medium size as well by ending just a little earlier or whatever um who else has a question I actually, this is Mary Sue with the picture, just because. Hi, Mary Sue. I love Hi. your picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm on the, I'm the one with the hat. And okay. then my business partner, we own a tiny, tiny yarn store here in Port Angeles. Actually, it started as a studio for people to knit cool. and, and, and everything. And I'm so glad that Jeannie brought, is it Jeannie or Jean, brought up Jean. the fact about Superwash and sustainable people because We've been open 10 years now and there were a lot of fibers we didn't carry and yarns we didn't carry. People wanted us to carry bamboo. And until we could actually have the uh, suppliers um, give us the provenance of the yarn and were they doing it sustainably, we would not carry bamboo. If we uh -huh. got something that had 10% bamboo, it quickly went on sale because we couldn't go against our principles of providing sustainable yarn and um, fiber. And so most of our fiber for spinning is locally sourced here uh, on the Olympic Peninsula. And we do bring in some others, but um, it's just so great to see other knitters out there asking that. And what's yeah. nice is most of the major yarn suppliers now are getting away from China, which was the biggest non-sustainable provider of Superwash. Most of the independent dyers now are actually checking where their Superwash is coming from so that they know the story, but the mills in yeah. Turkey and Germany now have the certification. So it's just nice to see that people other than yarn shop owners actually care about the yarn they're getting. That's just great. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, I, think, I think some of the extra taxes and tariffs help a little bit you know it's not a good situation we, in fact we had a we had to pay a really hefty ta tariff on this yarn that we weren't and we weren't expecting for a variety of reasons but um but you know um it does make you stop and think where is it coming from and do i really need that you know in in our in our um in our yarn so and I'm glad I didn't pick the uh, shawl pattern before I heard you because I think I'm going to pick the socks. Oh, good. They I are. Really... They're super cute. I mean, they look so cute on everybody here. I, I, this isn't a, this is terrible, but this isn't a sock I would wear, but on everyone else here, they just love them. Like the, um, you know, both, even, I mean, Barb is just drooling over these. She just loves them. <laughs> and they look so, they look so cute with, um, printed keds or or sandals or heels i mean there's just such a variety of footwear that you can pair with a fancy little sock like that well so. you know lots of the pacific northwest we wear socks with um burks and clogs sandals <laughs> yeah all the time but i like short cuffed socks so that's great for me and i can usually get two pair with my tiny feet out of a skinny yarn so that's wonderful uh -huh. now where is your shop port where is port angeles 
Port Angeles is on the Olympic Peninsula. Uh -huh. And by the way, the Olympic National Park was just rated number one for national parks by several people. So of course now we'll have more than 3 million people coming to see our little town. Um, okay. But yeah, we're, we're way out there on the thumb. So now I'm, I'm sorry, but um, you have to say what state. I, I'm just oh, not- Washington. Oh, Washington. okay. That's what I, I assumed, but um, you know, assuming can get you in trouble <laughs> so, yeah no okay. port angeles washington it's beautiful out here i moved out here from ohio i moved oh, out cool. here from Bronzeville almost 15 years ago and when i got out here i said okay i'm here to stay and in 2011 um i was i was worked for a large company and in 2011 i asked my boss would you mind if i started a business on the side and he was like because you have to get permission and uh -huh. He's like, no, please do it. You should, you're here too much. Please, please go. Get your course. <laughs> so it, uh, it's been an interesting road, but it's been fun. We have great tourists that come in and we're right across from the Coho Ferry that goes to Vancouver Island. Of course, it hasn't for the last 16 months, but. Cool. I'll be out there in February um, for Red Alder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be okay. teaching it and um, giving the keynote address at the banquet on Saturday night. Well, so. I will try to get in this year. I'm retiring in two months from my day job so that I can work at the uh, store full time with my business partner because it's getting kind of busy now, which is good. It took 10 years, but it's getting really busy. <laughs> Great. So. Let's, um, let's see if anybody else has something they want to talk about. Anybody else? Well, I want to. the name I'm, of your shop? Oh, hi, yeah. Audrey. Hi, yeah, I'm in Washington State too, Mary Sue. I'm on Whidbey Island. And what's huh? the name of your shop? I will put it out there. It's cable fiber. It, would it be okay, Anne, if I put it out there? Would you yeah, be absolutely, okay absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's cable fiber and yarn. And uh, um, we're part of that uh, slow yarn crawl, so that's nice. And uh, yeah, we have a fun little shop. We like it. Cool. Well, but I was not trying to. I was not trying to promote my shop at all, and I, I don't. Now, how far are you from where Red Alder is? Is it far? Oh, we're about two hours driving because we don't oh. we don't have to take a ferry. Maybe, and I can get to Tacoma in an hour and forty five minutes. Okay. If the gods are with me. If the traffic gods are with me. <laughs> I was going to say, hopefully I can visit, but I don't know what my um, transportation situation will be. I'm, I'm usually at the mercy of whatever um, yeah. out there. <laughs> Debbie, did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, I'm just wondering if this yarn would be applicable for your crisscross that you have. The crisscross, um, yeah. Fabric, yeah. It just, I, I thought it would be pretty to frame a face. Oh so yeah, and I wondered about that for my sister. Yeah, that'd be really. You could probably get two of them out of this. Okay. I think. Um, I think that yarn that scarf was knit with DK weight, but I know you're smart enough to adjust it. I'd have to. I'd have to look. Um, when I looked at it, I thought that it had pretty similar gauge. And uh -huh. I thought oh, it was okay. with one of the sports that you had knit it. Okay. Um, it, that was, that's a really old pattern. So I'm not remembering all the details. Off yeah. The I bought it a lot, quite a while ago. But. <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's a beautiful That'd color. Be, and it would be like so frothy in that, um, stitch pattern too. It would be really pretty. Thank yeah. You. We were, um, uh, several people have mentioned that they would like to get a sweater quantity of this yarn and, um, and we have plenty. There's, there's plenty here for anyone who wants more. Um, and we, in the knit along the other night, we were going through the whole sweater catalog and naming off all the sweaters that you could knit with this yarn. And it, it really is so soft and smooth. It would be pretty in a lot of the different designs. Um, but any of the yarns that call for fingering weight or that call for better breakfast fingering would work beautifully um, with this yarn or anything that calls for um, sea pearl would probably work as well. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? 
what are you guys all doing right now? Is it's summer? I mean, um, I know our garden is just pouring out produce. <laughs> our little garden. <laughs> Yesterday, I cooked up like twenty pounds of squash for freezing for my mother-in-law. <laughs> Thankfully, my mother-in-law loves. Um, there's a southern recipe, um, a southern dish called squash and onions, where you just caramelize the onions and and you put in thin slices of squash and keep putting in the squash and cooking it down and cooking it down until it's pretty mushy. And she loves that. And it uses up a lot of squash. So, so fortunately I have an outlet for it. <laughs> the cucumbers, however, are piling up. <laughs> How about you, Audrey? How's your garden doing? <laughs> Uh, the garden, we went away camping this last week. So oh. the garden, when I came back, had lots. Um, cucumbers, <laughs> I should probably send you this link. I had to ridiculously simple pickles. Uh huh. Ridiculously easy dill pickles. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, and you can do it in a mason jar. But I'm interested to hear about your squash recipe because that's what we eat every night for dinner all summer. Uh huh. You know, uh -huh. caramelized onions with squash <laughs> in it. <laughs> I mean, it's so simple. That's really it. You know, a, pa yeah. a pat of butter and a tablespoon of oil. And I mean, in a big skillet and a, a sweet onion and caramelized, get that going and then put the squash in and just keep adding and adding. And it actually takes a little bit of time to cook because you have to cook it in such a way that you're not drowning the dish in water as you go. You have to cook off all the water and then add some more squash cook off all the water and add some more squash and then of and course then she has to you, oh, go you can add any of your herbs like basil or dill or tarragon or any of the flavors you like oh yeah but not if you're my mother-in-law oh. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even like black pepper if, if wow. there's a speck of black pepper in it she can find it so yeah no um just um, yeah, she's very, um, no offense to anyone here, but she's very Southern that way. You know, um, she likes everything pretty plain and sweet. <laughs> so, so then the beets, our beets are delicious right now. Um, my, my green beans, just, yeah. my green beans are slow, but yeah. um, so tomatoes, be, uh, picked, cucumbers, squash. I picked a bunch of green beans the other day, which it surprised me that they were there. So I reserved a few small squashes and made a sizzling uh, green beans and um, slices of squash and mushrooms, um, you know, Chinese stir fry last night with very hot pepper. That, Ooh, yum. <laughs> that is the antidote to the squash and onions, <laughs> <laughs> which we, uh, you know, we love hot food. So <laughs> it's very hard for me to cook without spices and herbs. <laughs> Um, but getting back to knitting, <laughs> we have, um, so let me tell you about new coming up news. We have, um, this week we're releasing the firefly pullover pattern, which is a fingering weight, um, top, which also would be perfect for this. It's got lace insets in the sides and, um, you can do three different sleeve options, a sleeveless version, a short sleeve version, or a long sleeve version and the sleeve is all open work along with the um, inset in the side seam. And it's a kind of a triangle shaped top that I can't even show you because it's not here. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I have two samples and neither of them are here, but um, it's super pretty. It's a very light summery kind of thing. Um, it would even be pretty as a tunic for fall over a you know over a top or a um a, a tissue turtleneck or something like that it would be really pretty um with using um a neutral and a color underneath or two colors on top of each other so that's coming out wednesday if you subscribe to our newsletter you'll you'll be able to see that we also have the mystery knit along has ended and the um the final um pattern will be available like this week or next week the final pattern name is going to be and it was chosen by the our farmers who raise the bees waggle dance is the pattern name 
And so that's coming out um, in full form for everybody to purchase. And then our yarn discovery tour starts September 1st or the first week of September. I think it's actually on the 7th is the first day, but we'll be telling you a lot more about that as, um, as we get closer to the date. Anybody can participate, but it is our local yarn tour. And because we have a virtual component to it, um, we can have everybody participate, which made last year's yarn discovery tour really, really special and successful for us. So every year for the yarn discovery tour, you know, there's this whole thing about offering a free pattern for people that spend a certain amount of money. And I always design a new pattern for that purpose. So there's, there's a new pattern coming out. It will be exclusive to yarn tour participants. The yarn tour is, um, it's like $6 to join and you get a passport and that entitles you to um, free patterns at the different shops when you spend $10 and a free stitch marker with your um, $10 purchase and entries into raffles. It's, it's, it's pretty fun. We're sending out everybody who participates gets a little tin that they can put their stitch markers in this year. So you can collect all your stitch markers in one place. And we're designing the tin so you know it's gonna be cute. And um, so we'll be, um, we'll be announcing all that news probably mid-August. And you'll get a, a peek at the, at the exclusive shawl pattern. Um, yes, there was a little charm with this month's yarn. It has nothing to do with the Yarn Discovery Tour, but you got a progress keeper with this month's yarn. Um, it has a little lobster claw clip on it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot to bring that up earlier. So because our project, our main project is knit in the round, we decided to go with the progress keeper, which like I said, has a little lobster claw clip so you can move it up your project as you go. So you can mark your rows or your repeats as you go. And it's shaped like a little peach because that was the cutest one she had. Um, so we will um, so enjoy those. You can also use it since it has a lobster claw, you can put it on your tote, on your project tote as a zipper pull as well, um, which is what I use them for. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have for recent upcoming news. In September, we have another barn box installment. It's a secret yarn. It's something new and custom spun. And um, we just love it. Um, Barb has already had the good fortune to knit something with it. And I have not yet knit with it, but I will be getting it on the needles in the next week or two. Um, so that's really exciting. And I, I'm literally like, can't wait for the September barn box. And we just had the July barn box. So. Exactly. Um, not that I want time to go faster than it already goes, but um, it's going to be really pretty. Did Any you mention, oh. did you mention Rhinebeck KAL? Oh, yes, that's right. Um, our Rhinebeck sweater knit along starts on August 7th. So it, it's going to be in the newsletter this week, along with the release of the Firefly pattern. Um, it will be $12 to join. Um, we meet twice a week on Zoom. It's the meetups are the Zoom meetups are lots of fun. Um, we do Wednesday nights for people who like evenings and we do Saturday afternoons for people who like the weekend times or who like both. And um, the meetups are two hours. We, we all just knit along. You'll have a chance to ask questions. If you've never knit a sweater, this is your chance to um, take on a beginner project and um, have lots and lots of support and help and good suggestions from everyone, including me. I'm always there. Um, with your entry of $12, you get a free pattern. So, um, and then there's a prize pool. So the, the money is all kind of goes back to you guys um, in the knit alongs. It's just a lot of fun. 
it started because of COVID, but we'll just keep doing them. We enjoy it so much. Yay. So it starts August 7th and ends October 2nd. So that's pretty much eight weeks. And um, we, will, we will encourage and support you all the way through a sweater for Rhinebeck, whether you can go in person or attend virtually. So uh, several people here. Um, I mean, Debbie, was that your first sweater that you knit in our knit along? The, the very first one I did. I've done two because of you, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, and you know, you were really hesitant about doing a sweater. And that I was, uh, I feel like you've knit more than two sweaters. You have, you knit, didn't you knit Unbroken? I did, I did and Unbroken and I did Sea Fret. Sea Fret, and then you knit one for your sister. You knit a peach color. Oh, I did, I did. A pink yeah. one for your sister. You're right, I did do that, you're right. Yeah, and now you're knitting Robin's Nest? I think I've changed my mind and I think I'm going to do Lex 405. Is that oh, 405? 405 Lex, yeah. But I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to use Stone Soup, which I've always wanted to use, or if I should go ahead and do the Deco Sport. It would Isn't be Deco Lace. It's, it's Deco Lace. Lace. That's right. Lace. Deco Lace. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, either are, one would... Go ahead. Are the cables more pronounced with the Deco Lace than they are going to be with the Stone Soup? I would... I would say they're very pronounced either way. The okay. stone soup is tweedier, so, um, but stone soup makes really nice cables. Okay. It makes really nice pronounced cables. The very first yarn I ever bought from you was stone soup and it's still sitting in my, in my oh. stash waiting. So I, I hesitate. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I think I'm gonna do the 405, the, the Lex, just because I think it's so gorgeous. I would love to see that knit in stone soup because um, that's one, uh, I haven't used it for that, you know, but I think it would be okay. so pretty. Okay. Yeah. I know, I mean, I knit triticum in stone soup and it's beautiful, so. Is it, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think everyone talks about how soft and, and luxurious or fun that fabric is. So I, I'm thinking that that might be what I do. I think what's so nice about it is it's so wearable, so. It's not a fabric you want to keep for good. So you wear it a lot and it's very comfortable. And the more you wear it, the better it gets. So that's okay. my kind of love of it. <laughs> okay. I think I'm convinced. <laughs> Who else has something they want to ask or talk about? Anybody? Um, I have a, I, a sort ahead. of an off topic question it's still knitting though um i've been asked to knit some christmas stockings you know the old-fashioned kind that somebody's grandmother had made and i started and i was doing it i guess it's the intarsia technique where you carry it and and somebody suggested instead of doing that just do um duplicate stitch do you have oh. an opinion about that um not really i have done both um, not extensively, but I have done some duplicate stitch and it's a lot more, to me, it's more tedious than doing color stranded knitting. I mean, you have to be really careful in choosing the yarn that you do it with to make sure that yarn will cover the background because uh, yeah, yeah. you're, you're literally covering up the stitches in the background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's so easy for them to show through if it's not quite the right yarn. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're doing color work, you have to settle for an incompatible yarn because it's the right color. And that's where you can run into trouble with duplicate stitch, in my humble opinion. Um, and yeah, I don't I mean, mind. The, the yarn is already selected, but I, I was inclined just to do it the way the directions were. And so I was just curious if there was some advantage to doing duplicate stitch. That The one I can think of is if you're not good at keeping your tension pretty even as you carry the other color, mm -hmm. which is a nice challenge to work on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is it stranded color work or it's color block? Or some of it, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what it would be called. It's back and forth. So... It's probably a little bit of both where you do the letters for the for the name and uh -huh. then you do little figures. Mm -hmm. 
And then I think they have you carry the yarn. I was carrying it and doing the technique of weaving it in in the back so there wouldn't be big long floats. Generally, um, intarsia is where you're doing more like pic section, more pictorial knit um, images, and the stitch count is so high that carrying the yarn across isn't really practical. Right. Um, and sometimes it's combined and then stranded is where you're always carrying the the yarn and I like I like stranded knitting I don't do very much of it but I do enjoy it this might have a little bit of both I honestly I picked it up and I did part of it and I did it with the two colors and then I set it down and somebody was like oh you could just do duplicate stitch and I was like oh, it's really I tedious yeah oh, thanks really I mean tedious. for me it, it's not I haven't done much of it and it's not obvious where this I think that would be I think even um you know those types of projects often have a little bit of duplicate stitch to put in like facial yeah um, the elements touches. and little details but doing a whole picture in it is like I guess it's like doing needlepoint in a way you know and I guess it's like like um Kitchener stitch or grafting it's like it, you either like it or you don't I guess oh so, yeah I, I, I don't I've done quite a few stockings um, yeah and I always carried my yarn and I'm not very good at it so the stockings are very large which some of the children love um, <laughs> but I did their names in duplicate stitch Oh. because uh, several of them had 10 letter names. So I just did the duplicate stitch around a white band at the top always. And then I did duplicate stitch for the name. And that well, worked I already, out. I already stranded the, the longer name. <laughs> I already knit. So I think I'll leave it. <laughs> I don't think I'll yeah. go back and do it. Right. And the other one is only three letters. So I think I can get by with Yes, I had a Gus. Gus's was pretty easy. Yes. But um, and one the other thing is, I've done some where you, I went down to the heel back and forth, and then I joined it for circular to do the foot. I think and, that's what the pattern calls for. Yeah, that was very successful. And it, oh, um, and then I could do all the little add-ons like the French knots for the ornaments on the Christmas tree were easier to do on that open back. On the flat. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. That's yeah. a good idea. Or Thank the eyes for a reindeer yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Thanks, Audrey. That's helpful. And yeah, I think Audrey, doing, the, doing the names in duplicate stitch makes sense too, because so much of lettering is straight up and down. So when you do stranding on on uh, shapes that are rectangular, you can get a lot of bubbling in your stranded mm -hmm. color work that way. And so duplicate stitch does make a lot more sense for that. Okay. Yeah, Audrey, I agree with you. That's the way I did it is I do it flat until the heel and then I join to work in the round and do the rest of the sock in the round. And then there's only a little, there's less to sew up and the, the foot looks a lot better, but I also duplicate stitch the names when I do them. Good to know. So good job. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like as hot as it is and as, you know, mid July as it is out there, I just feel like fall is coming toward us like a freight train. <laughs> we yeah. have so many activities. Um, in the in September and October and November now um, that and that's the other thing um, coming up in the fall, not till October, but our our um, Festivus yarn is in the house and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so our will be beginning the the designer samples are due in the middle of August and we'll be starting to photograph them and um, get our ebook ready for the release in October of our of our Festivus push and that's one of my favorites yeah yeah I just love it um, and and on that note um, I just want to thank everybody again the people who overlap here who participated in the mystery knit along we um we exceeded our wildest um, expectations in terms of fundraising for the Bee Sanctuary 
Um, you know, at the start of it, we've based on other knit alongs participation that we've had, we thought, oh, if we could, I think we can raise enough for one hive, which is $650. And hopefully we can raise enough for two hives. And we, we're ending up with seven hives. And I'm just so happy. We, we've raised over, um, we've raised about $4,500 total. And um, I'm just so grateful that we were able to do that for them. And, you know, getting back to the first sentences of, of this get together, um, do our bit whenever we can to um, support our ecosystem and our bee population. And, um, you know, that just, it's all payback for us eventually since they contribute to our agricultural production and, and all of that. But thank you, everybody. It was awesome. And for those who didn't participate, but would like to do a little something, we are still, um, we're still open for collecting funding for the bee farm. There's a, um, an, a donation page on our um, website that you can use to just donate any amount of money that you like toward the bee sanctuary. It's the Spike and Ard um, Honey Bee Sanctuary in Floyd, Virginia. They're doing a magnificent job of educating and um, repopulating um, lost bee colonies and um, keeping whatever we do have alive and well. So anything you can do to help us there, we're gonna keep our donation page open for a little while longer. Um, and when we release the full pattern this week, hopefully we'll get a little bump from that too. So maybe we'll even get to an eighth hive this week, who knows. And are there still totes available? <laughs> oh yeah, the, um, oh, let me grab one. Um, I'll be right back. They're so cute, you guys. Hang on. I have one right here. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, let me just grab So it. we did, we, um, we made a special, we produced a special tote bag. It's um, property of knitting royalty. Um, so if you are inclined toward uh, project totes, um, it's, uh, our, we always get our toads sewn from organic cotton canvas, and we work with a family business in Maine who produces them, um, and they're, they just love making our tote bags with us. They, they just always are excited about a new design and, um, happy to get our order, and, um, they're just terrific, so. Um, I happen to be working on my project as well. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, the color's showing up. It it goes down. It, it hasn't been blocked, but it's really a fun knit. It yeah, the, the design begins with a fairly abstract, um, you don't really know what's happening in the beginning, and then it, um, it congeals into this honeycomb, more and more complex honeycomb pattern. Um, that's just really fun to do. It's very rhythmic and soothing and Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, Jean, what did you knit that with? Yes. What did you knit that with, Jean? Um, we need you to unmute. It was one of the ones that, I'm um, sorry, I forget the name. That, um, that, uh, the, there, there was only two to choose from at the beginning um, mm -hmm. you suggested. What were the names? Because I'll know it by. Was the it the Devil? The, Pardon the me? Devil? The modern deco sport. I think it's this, yeah, yeah. This is the modern deco sport. Yeah, the titanium, yeah. and I have one here in the titanium. Um, yeah, pretty. Yeah, I have That's one really here pretty in the oh. in the um, carbon steel. I think no, this is chrome. No, this is carbon steel. <laughs> so this <laughs> That's beautiful too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow! I knit mine from a um, uh, local mill here on Whidbey Island and it is a merino blend because it's still chilly in the evenings. We're having the ideal weather where it's 80, maybe 82 in the daytime, but drops down to about 56 or maybe 52 at night. So we do wool year round, as you know, Mary Sue. Very nice. We're having nice temperatures too. Um, 
So yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. We're definitely doing a mystery knit along again next summer. And um so well, um anybody else have anything they want to ask or input or anything they want to say? Anything I didn't cover that you wish I had? I just want to say, I think I better learn how to knit a whole lot faster because I'm getting behind on my projects here. And they're always that are getting ready to go in the queue. But you make it really fun. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I try. Yeah, very much. Yeah. Well, and hopefully um, you're knitting. It's not stressful that you're knitting what you want and how you want. Oh, my gosh. Look how look how pretty this looks with gray. Oh, Yeah. I mean, that would be pretty in a stripey shawl too. Well, it's mm. like you're walking in shade that you did with the um, silk yeah. blend yarn. And it's yeah. hanging behind you on one of your mannequins. I saw it. Um, walking in shade? No. no, we don't have that no. one out. It's not this one. Oops. Um, remember, it, that's not walking in shade where it went over. What was Which it called then? Oh, it's it alternates the the um, yeah the lace band fit. and the garter band. Yeah, I know what it is, but it's not out. It's not out. Um, that's not what I'm seeing behind your head. Okay. No, that's hypnotic. Behind oh, my head. Okay. Well, see, you were just hypnotized. <laughs> 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 but the also the um the the poppies that. A uh, gray poppy's cowl that would be pretty with this yarn or um there are tons and tons of options even options from your previous barn box installments that that would work so the um the uh, miami cuban would be cute so well if no one else has you know what i have one quick question Anne, if yeah. you don't mind no, not at all. Hi, this is Shauna from Seattle. Sorry. Hi, Shauna. Um, you mentioned a couple of Knit Box episodes ago. Um, I think you talked about how uh, in the olden days, you used to do kind of a book or a booklet that had a lot of the history about the fibers and the animals um, and the animal husbandry and use and all that. And then you mentioned something about doing that in the future or making that available for purchase and I being new to the barn box because I've only done this four four times I think um so far uh I was thinking oh yes sign me up and I, how do I get all the old ones and how do I understand well, um if you go to our website at barenakedwools.com and um click on at the top there are different categories if you click on designs I think it's on designs um you want to go to the ebook page let me just see if I can get there. Hang on. Um, if, if this is too much to address right now. That I, no, I not, <clears throat> not at all. Um, Shauna, I'm, I'm just, like you. I didn't yeah, do all those original books yeah. so and I love click them. Click on designs and go to eBooks, which is the first thing under, under designs. And all the eBooks I've written are there. And the ones that are BNK, BNK books or or bare naked knit spot books. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones with all the natural yarns and the kind of uh, research level writing. I love it. It was. And, it, uh, I heard you do uh, one of them a couple of uh, months ago, and it was absolutely a seminar. Uh, yeah, I watched it a couple times. I haven't taken notes yet, but I'm planning to go back and actually take notes and put it into my knitting uh, journal. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And if you know, if I ever get to teach. Um, out your way um if i ever get to teach the um yarn yarn voyage class it's all about um uh, i have two yarn voyage classes and it's all about the different animals and the different spinning and all the different components of yarn that kind of come together as a as a symphony yeah. to mm -hmm. make individual types of yarn um, I love the geography of it and the cultural aspects of it. And sometimes it's got these are really good. good. So this is the page with all the books on it. Um, okay. There's BNK 2012, BNK 2013, BNK 2014. And, and what it is, is each chapter of the book would be an installment of the club. Oh. 
and 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 the installment um, often was a custom spun yarn or something we sourced from a farm producer or, or whatever or something specialty like we did colored cotton from Peru one time that the cotton actually grows in colors on the plant so it's very rare it's produced um, you know through a co-op with Peruvian um, farmers uh, very ecologically friendly um, and so it you know there's a lot of um, there's a lot of history to the animals themselves and how they evolved, and then also when appropriate, you know, some of the geopolitical factors that bring yarn to us or prevent <clears throat> us access from it, um, those kinds of things. And um, I just try to. There's no set format for any chapter. I try to tell the full story of each yarn it sounds wonderful thank you yeah so much. i i was really complimented on uh, the in the last um full-length b and k book we did a no not the last one but one of the last ones we did a suri alpaca uh yarn mm -hmm. from a from a provider in missouri and um i wrote the chapter and shared it with her and she took it to a seminar, a national seminar to read to the whole, because she was like, I've never, I've never read anything this well done about Surya Alpaca. And I was like, oh my God, you know, I'm not like a scientist or anything, just, you know. Fantastic. What I found with the fiber books was that, I'm not trying to compliment myself in any way, but, but when I set out to start researching what I wanted to write, what I found was that the authors who were writing about fiber, and there are many that do, I would go to their books and every book would have the exact same information about a fiber. If you can hear, Anne, you got frozen. Frozen. I assumed it was me. I've got teenagers in the house and I figured they all woke up at the same time. No, she's frozen for me too. Oh. <laughs> Shauna, I live on Whidbey Island. Where do you live in Seattle? I saw that and I was thinking I should find you. I'm actually up in the Kenmore area. Okay. I'll Fine. see if I can find you somewhere and I'm a private message you on some forum. I only do Ravelry. Um, and I might be under Audi BB or something. Okay, I'll look. It looks like she and dropped. Maybe she's going to reconnect. For those who haven't joined knitting uh, knit alongs for sweaters, the only problem I have is sometimes it's hard to knit and talk if you have a complicated pattern. <laughs> Agree. That's the way I, I uh, justify having multiple works in progress. <laughs> there is some that I can do while I sit in the corner quietly and think about what I'm doing. I just did a double knitting knit along and I thought that it would be hard, but the pattern was just so easy once you got past the beginning that it was like, Oh, I can do this and talk. <laughs> I haven't tried the double knitting yet, but I did buy um, some courses from Lucy Meepy and uh, was floored by uh, what she did in the Knit Stars program. So fingers crossed I can work my way up to that. Well, this is probably the easiest double knitting to start with. And it was just nice. It was just stripes and hearts and, and it was, it was nice and easy and a good way to learn double knitting. Well, perhaps we should, was this only supposed to run until the top of the hour? I'm unaware. Uh, yeah, so am I. It's the first one I've been able to join. So. Well, welcome. 
Yeah, I, I heard her when she talked at the, the Red Alder talks um, in February, which was great that they had those Zooms. And that's when I joined up, I said, okay, I've got to, I got to understand more about this. Do you know if the tickets for Red Alder are up for sale yet? I don't know. I, I would think that they do the same thing that they, you know, that they took over when they took over Madrona, but I don't know. I haven't seen any emails on it. Right. I signed up for emails and I haven't seen it either. I just know for Madrona, it's just was, <laughs> it was, you know, the first couple of years, I was one of those people that was fortunate and lucky and got in and, and no problem. And then from like 2014 on, it was just tougher and tougher and tougher. So, you know, being that I could drive down for the day, that, that worked. I never did Madrona. I wasn't living in the area when Madrona was happening. Well, unfortunately, 2013, I had it all set up, and then I ended up having emergency surgery on February 5th, and Madrona started the February 17th, and, you know, they were iffy if I was going to be able to go down, so I canceled my room, and um, it turned out I could go down, but it was like, well, okay, not now, <laughs> but Madrona was nice. I learned a lot, and uh, it's a great way to get, it was a great way to get exposure to a lot of people, so... And that the the um, the little for sale area was really nice too. Does anybody know if Anne's got uh, anything uh, coming up in terms of in person or online events? She's doing in person at Red Alder in February, is what she said. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, yes, and she's the keynote speaker. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So that's what <laughs> I was like. So for the three of us, that's pretty good. There you go. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, Audrey, I wish I could. I was I used to go to Whidbey Island every year for the spin in in April. And uh, of course, they've had to cancel it. And it's just just a shame to have missed it for the last couple of years. I don't even know about the spin in. I'm not yeah, a spinner. It's, yeah, it's the wood. It's the um, and there is actually yarn there too. Um, it's usually held at the high school in Oak Harbor, and it's usually that first full weekend in April. And it's by the Weavers Guild. Uh, the, it's the it's the spinners and weavers. But I'm going to say it's more of the Weavers Guild that does it. But I I can't exactly remember. Um, you know which is big. And I used to judge at the uh, county fair up there, which is down what in Langley. It's and in Langley. It just happened. And that is the funnest. You know, they can you can only judge two years in a row. So I used I judged in spinning, then I judged in weaving, then I judged in knitting, then <laughs> and finally it was like, okay, I've had I've just done, done my two years at all of the things I know how to judge. So. Um, it's, it was, it, it was, was a very, very nice and very talented people down there. It was a crazy fair this year. I think everybody was so ready to get out The it was a 45 minute line to get through the gate to get in. Wow. And there were two lines feeding it. Yeah. Ours got canceled. They just thought it'd be too risky up here in Clallam County. And of course we've had a a spike. We've had four people die in the last three weeks. Um, there was a big outbreak at a church of a whole bunch of people that weren't vaccinated. So, yeah, uh, it's a shame. I'm being cautious still. I wear my mask at all the grocery stores. Yep, we we wear our mask in public no matter where we go. Yeah. It's just it's just too too dicey. You know, even though we're vaccinated, it's still just too scary. Well, I think I'm, I'm going to drop off. I'm I'm signing off. Bye everybody. Bye everybody.